Hello and welcome to another episode of the SME Focus Show brought to you by Factory Now TV. I'm your host, Christopher Greeno, and in this series, we will focus on SMEs within the British manufacturing sector. Every week, we will discuss and analyze the challenges and opportunities facing our sector in these unprecedented times. I have worked in the sector for over 27 years, and I'm CCO at SDE Technology, one of the leading manufacturers of pressings and assemblies in the UK. So as you can hopefully appreciate, this show is very much for manufacturers, by manufacturers. Joining me this week, and I'm really excited, this week we have Kevin Taylor, the Mayor of Stratford-upon-Avon. Kevin, welcome. How are you? Good, good afternoon, Chris. Thank you very much for the invite. It's a pleasure You're to welcome. be here. You're welcome. First Mayor we've had on the show in all wow, your regalia. We're highly honoured. <laughs> We're highly honoured. So, Kevin, you come from a manufacturing background. How does this help you with the role of Mayor of Stratford-upon-Avon? Um, many people have said to me since I've taken this role, what, what, what is the job description? And, and yep. there really isn't one in a way. It's what you choose to make of it. Yep. But I actually think um, a, um, a customer of mine actually messaged me shortly after taking over the position. And he said, I think our background provides a very good um, uh, assistance to do this type of role. And I think he's actually right. I actually think local authorities could learn an enormous amount from the manufacturing sector. Uh, I think we're all aware that we all, through our years of experience in, the tra in, in, in manufacturing, learn how to get things done very quickly, yep. uh, learn how to adapt, le um, learn how to give people exactly what they want at the right time. Um, my personal experience so far in, in two years of being a councillor and, and eight weeks of being a mayor, maybe all local authorities don't always do that and the, there is a protocol for everything and, and and everything has to go through series of committees and and, and meetings yeah so i actually think it, it's I, th I think people uh like my enthusiasm that i bring to the role and, and i like to bring all the things that i learned while i was in the manufacturing industry absolutely and stratford is a vibrant and exciting area of the country and in terms of manufacturing, what sort of manufacturing have you got? Well, it's not renowned for its manufacturing. Many people, oh. as, as soon as you mention Stratford-upon-Avon, will say the Royal Shakespeare Theatre, uh, yep. William Shakespeare. However, there has been a long-established manufacturer. It, it's like many towns, it's seen oh. great decline over the years in its manufacturing base. However, we still have maintained... Um, a world famous bicycle manufacturer here called Pashley's, and they've yep. actually been in operation since 1926 and, and are still one of the, the world's most popular manufacturers of traditional bicycles. Um, just venturing into uh, electric versions of those now, which we're hoping to have 20 of to utilize in our town center very shortly uh, to encourage businesses. Uh, to deliver product uh, yep. to help with with the uh, the traffic flow in town centre, um, and we have even in my sector, which was the component manufacturing sector, we also have Tapex Manufacturing, which yep. again is sixty years old. Um, I think it's third generation now within that family. So we 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 have actually got some quite successful manufacturing companies here. Absolutely. And in terms of manufacturing, there was the scrapping of the industrial strategy earlier this year. What do you think needs to happen in terms of a plan for business, a plan for manufacturing in local and central government? Well, for me, I've always been really disappointed with what I've seen even prior to this decision. I yeah. never think there's been enough emphasis from local or central governments on maintaining developing, improving our manufacturing offer. Um, we see many other countries in the world, in particular people like Germany, who have far better support from their government systems, uh, which have enabled their businesses to thrive and grow over the last 30 years. And all we've seen really is decline. Um, I, I, personally, for me, again, in what I stated earlier on with regards to local governments, in what I bring to the table here, I've been able to utilise many things that I learned in manufacturing already in two years. 
for me, I, I don't think there's any, enough emphasis in central government to have people in the roles or or deciding these positions, the, these these you know the, these plans who ha actually have the manufacturing experience. I, I think you know if. If, if we're actually putting these things together, we should be consulting more with the manufacturing bodies to actually make sure we get what our industry and, and requires to to develop. And, and and it's essential for me, really, because I think in in a, the heyday of our manufacturing, we're, they were the largest employers in every town and city. Absolutely. And sadly, we don't have that anymore. And I think it's great with the trade deals that we see that are being signed on a, on a regular basis now. But without that real manufacturing heartland back in place, I think it will, in uh, our economic recovery, will just be delayed. I think, you know, we, I think we need to somehow, with government incentive and support, rediscover that, that manufacturing heartland, in, in, in particular the Midlands, that we had, that we had 30 years ago. Absolutely, and you mentioned the right people in the right in the right place within government. Do you think that a minister for manufacturing would help support the sector? I think it would, but it needs to be. I, I mean, I'm I'm always very um, sceptical when I see the appointments of ministers. Um, yeah. And uh, for me, if I was if I was in Boris Johnson's position and I was looking for a minister, I'd be looking for somebody who had the necessary. Um, background i always think it's very strange when you see a transport minister whose experience of transport is probably commuting in and out of london on the train um whereas there may be someone who has great logistical experience that they're in there that would be of assistance yeah so so for me i think it would be very important but again it's critical you get the right person um and for me i don't know whether we have anybody in, in, in current government, in parliament that would, would fit that role. Um, I do like the idea sometimes where government brought in specialist czars, as they call them, with the necessary experience to look at particular fields. But I think, I think it would be a start. But I think, you know, along with that, then, then, then they need to create some great incentives for people to want to invest in manufacturing again. And that's really where we, we, we haven't got that industrial strategy, that long-term plan. No. People struggle to invest because some yeah. of the investment, certainly, that we're looking at making is a 10, 20-year payback. And that you need to be investing in the right thing. And that's why the industrial strategy was such a shame when it was let go and certainly let go with nothing to, to sort of back it up. No firm plan in place. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um I mean, obviously, the pandemic highlighted to all of us when we first went into that, the, the, the difficulties that you can have when your supply chain is the other side of the world. Yes. And, and, it, and it's not that we've totally lost the skills to produce many of these parts. That these were just economic decisions that companies made for you know, short-term financial benefit, really. So to be quite honest, if the, I, I would like to see the government, you know, putting together something that encourages companies to a greater level to bring manufacturing back to this country um, in a larger scale. Um, yeah. And anybody that is currently manufacturing offshore, as they call it, should be incentivized to bring it back in a, in a, in a big way. Um, and as I said, until we actually get those volume manufacturing centers that we had previously, um, it's difficult. It's difficult to see our economy recovering at the rate that it should. And of course, when you have those great manufacturing centres, it contributes to the whole community of that town. So not only are you creating a great number of employment for, the, for your community, yep. but then there are the first tier suppliers in your community which will benefit. The shops will benefit. Every, the whole economy of the whole town grows from it. Absolutely, and it's it's really about how we can get more manufacturing, more reshoring back to the UK. So, in terms of Stratford upon Avon, obviously, twenty twenty very tough year for all. Um, what plans have you got to to reinvest, revigorate Stratford upon Avon? Well, um, two years ago, we 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 town council itself set up. Uh, 
a neighbourhood development plan for a, yeah. a, a very detailed one that, were, that had lots of projects. Um, and the, we put it out to the, 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 the public for them to vote on it. And it was voted unanimously that everybody was in agree agreement with it. However, you have to deliver it. So at the moment, we have two levelling up fund applications in um, for 18 million and 30 million, respectively, which will redesign the two main streets in our high street to make them more pedestrian friendly, uh, yeah. shared usage of space for e events. Um, and we also have a 30 million bidding for a new World Shakespeare Centre, which, okay. will, which will hopefully rejuvenate the overseas um, tourist trade, which obviously has seen great decline uh, since the pandemic. So we have, we have great visions for Stratford. And I know from a town council point of view, we've now decided or we'll vote on tomorrow, actually, um, to um, utilise any SIL money that we receive from developments to actually um, put forward for design projects to, to it from the neighbourhood development plan. So we continually looking, if you like, we've created our own continuous improvement plan. Fantastic, <laughs> fantastic. Really good to hear, Kevin. And well, if there's a minister for manufacturing, you'll throw your hat in the ring, no? Doubt. <laughs> well, you never know. <laughs> manufacturing into local government and then manufacturing into central government. Yeah. Kevin, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And I, I, I hear the great work you're doing there. And I do think that helps from a manufacturing background. You know how to change plans rapidly and to adapt. Exactly. Yeah. And you're doing exactly that in Stratford upon Avon. Kevin, thank you for your time today. Thanks very much, Chris. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. That brings us to the end of another show. Thank you for watching, and I look forward to meeting more of our brilliant SME manufacturers and those supporting the sector next week. If you would like to get in touch with the show, with a comment, a suggestion, or even to appear on a future episode, please email us tv at mtd.media. Great show this week. First mayor we've had on the show. Let's look for an MP and maybe even we'll get Boris on the show at one stage in the future. So from me, Chris G at SDE, goodbye.